Praise God. I'm going to heaven. Amen. Like the old song wrote, uh, songwriter wrote, I'm on my way to heaven, and the journey gets sweeter every day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You have your Bibles with you. If you will turn with me, praise the Lord in your Bibles. We're going to Psalm. The second Psalm. Starting in verse 11. Praise the Lord. While you're getting sung where you're at this morning, I just want to tell you that last Sunday we had a, uh, if you were here, we experienced a great wave of worship last Sunday as we worshiped the Lord together. It was exciting. It was great. It was fantastic. I think we worshiped the Lord in spirit and in truth. Worship and service go hand in hand. Yes. Did you know that? Thank you, Lord. When we are aware of Christ in you, the hope of glory, when we are conscious in our mind and body of the love and devotion Christ has for us, and when we return it back to him, then worship, praise, prayer, and adoration comes yes. forth naturally in the in intimate to the Lord just as it was for Jesus to intimately love the Father. And so I think last week was an uh, opening eye for me in my heart and I tell you I hope this is an opening eye for you this morning. Serve the Lord with fear, verse 11 and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun. I love that verse. Kiss the sun. Remember we talked about it? When you get into the presence of the Lord, hallelujah. The Greek word for intimate, for the Lord, hallelujah, is when you kiss towards the Lord. You kiss. And here in the word it says, kiss the sun. Meaning, Embrace him. Yes. Lest he be angry and you perish from the way when the wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they who put their trust in him. Thank you. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Yes, bless you. your holy name. And we praise you. Holy Spirit, have your will right now. Yes. Open our ears and our hearts and our minds to receive and comprehend what you're saying to the church. Oh, Lord, you're warning the church today. Look up for your redemption draws nigh. Watch and pray. Be ready, for you think not the Son of Man cometh. And we are so grateful for that, Lord. And, Lord, we love you today. We praise you today. And we're so thankful that Christ lives within us. And we brought on the church with us. Hallelujah. And we'll leave with Jesus in us. The hope of glory. The hope of this world is Jesus Christ. Praise oh, we give you glory now and praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man, yes. We are told 19 times in the Bible. 19 different scriptures in the Bible tells us to serve the Lord. And in Psalms 2 and 11, that word fear that we just read, when we said, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling, that word fear means reverence. Mm -hmm. We get the word yavre, and that rob, what Hebrew means reverence. The word of God is telling us three things in here. He's telling us that, number one, service to the Lord is important. Number two, Reverence to the Lord is important. And number three, rejoicing. Yes. You know, uh, have you ever seen in, the, in any movie that's ever been printed or written or, or filmed, did you ever see Jesus dancing? Probably not. You probably didn't see him shouting. You probably didn't see him just laughing. And so, in some movies, maybe they did have Jesus laugh. But I want, to, I want to tell you, Jesus laughed a lot. Yes. 
He rejoiced a lot. And I have those beautiful pictures of Jesus smiling. Right smiling on the other side, yes. Look at them on the way out. On, on the way out, look at those pictures. Jesus smiled an awful lot. Yes, he wept over Jerusalem. The Bible says, the shortest scripture in the Bible says, Jesus wept. He wept. But Jesus laughed a lot. And as I told you last Sunday, Jesus was, and his 12 disciples, not one of them was able to lead worship. <laughs> but Jesus led worship. He knew how to worship the Father. He knew how to reverence the Father, and he knew how to rejoice yeah. with the Father because, you know, he's Christ. Yeah. Everything that Jesus did, everything that he spoke, every healing that he did, he did it while worshiping yeah. the Father. That kind of points to us this morning that everything that we do, everything that we touch, everything that we say, ought to be in praise and worship and give God honor and glory. Man. You say, well, I don't know if that really works. It does work. <laughs> it really does work. Hallelujah. When we come into his presence, the word of God says with thanksgiving in our hearts and praise and worship is because of present, of reverence. Mm -hmm. It is so important for his church to be in reverence <laughs> before our God. When we come into the house of God or when we come and gather, we reverent God. That's why the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, there I'm in the midst of them. Amen. And the reason why he's in the midst of them because we have reverent God. We have given him reverence and, and, and we have bowed down before him and worshiped him and we are in his presence. That's why it's so important to realize that Christ in you, the hope of glory, hallelujah, that Christ lives in you, that wherever you walk, wherever you talk, whatever you do, know that Christ is inside you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I go to my Father so that I might send the Comforter, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit living with us, yeah. in us. You see, in the Old Testament, I described it last week, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came down upon them. But in the New Testament, the Bible says he came in them. Hallelujah. It changed everything. Praise the Lord. It changed everything. Praise God. We notice Jesus in his early life served the Lord with gladness, and we served him with rejoicing. When we talk about serving, what's the first thing we think about? I want you to know, first of all, we serve God, and he calls us servants. You know, the word servant is not very popular in America. <laughs> you don't hear anybody calling each other servants or slaves. Paul, Paul, in the, in the olden uh, days, in the Roman days, Paul, he said, I, I'm, a, I'm a slave or a servant of Jesus Christ. But we don't, you know, we, we've changed the, the word servant. We call them employees. <laughs> we, we've changed the, the name of the garbage collectors to sanitation engineers. And don't you dare call your wife a housewife. She's a homemaker. I, I'm not married to a housewife. I'm married to a homemaker. A wonderful wife. Hallelujah. So you've got to be careful. Amen. Some of you guys. <laughs> Praise the Lord. See, the most important thing is not forgetting. We can forget the title, but we've got to remember the task. The task is the most important thing. The, the task is what's important to be servants of the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I, I want you to turn with me, if you have your Bible, turn with me to Philippians, the second chapter. I'm going to go right over to it. <clears throat> Philippians, the second chapter. I want to show you what Paul had to say to the church of Philippi. As soon as I get there. Here we go. In the second chapter, verse 6 and 7, he says, 
who being in the form of God, who is he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. In the form of God refers to being deity. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of what? A servant. A servant. Hallelujah. And was made in the likeness of men. You see, Jesus wasn't afraid to be called a servant. Because that's what Jesus did. When he came here, he came in the form of man, and he became a servant. What, what does servant mean? It means service. It means someone who's going to take care of you. Hallelujah. I remember when, when I was just a little kid, we had moved to Germany. My dad was stationed there. And, uh, and we had this lady, German lady, that came to the house because my, my mom was going to have another baby, okay? She wound up having nine of them. So we came from, I came from a big family. And so my mom had to hire a, 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 a neighbor, and she came, and uh, she helped. She cooked and when my mom couldn't do it because she was on, flat on her, her back because she, medically, she, she couldn't uh, do anything, okay? And so she would be called a servant. Uh, I think people called her maid or called her nanny or whatever, and it wasn't, it didn't pay her very much. I mean, she didn't, didn't want a whole lot of money. She just wanted a place to stay. And so, so all of us kids, we had a we had this lady that was taking care of us, and uh, I liked her because she made me lots of peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, it, you know I was spoiled with peanut butter. I'm, I'm a you ask Sheila today. I'd rather have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich sometimes. Last night. I had one last night. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jesus had a lot of titles, but the best title was servant. Hallelujah. He had the Savior, Redeemer, Healer, Friend, Shepherd. Jesus, the Son of God. But Scripture tells us, and, and I, 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 I looked it up, and it's in Isaiah 42 and 1. When God was talking, and you should read the whole chapter. Because part of the chapter of uh, Isaiah 42 talks about the first advent, when Jesus comes, the first time. But the second half of the Bible talks about Jesus when he comes in the second coming, right before the millennial reign, when he comes with wrath, when he comes with judgment. But the first time he comes as a servant. And look what it says here in uh, Isaiah 42 and 1. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him, and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, in the smoking flash shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. That's the judgment that Jesus came. The truth. That's what he was bringing us, is the truth. See, there was many prophets and false prophets in the Old Testament. But many prophets, and here's one prophet of God who talks about Jesus coming as a servant. And Jesus came to tell the truth. See, it's important that we as children of the Most High God know what is the truth. Jesus was born 2,000 years ago. He came in the form of a man. He put on the servant. And hallelujah, he came, he died for us on the cross. Amen. And we recognize not only did he die, but he rose again the third day. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. He sent the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a revealer of truth. He never contradicts the word. Why is that, Pastor? Because he is the word. Jesus is the living word. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So God never contradicts himself. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Worship flows out of servanthood. Did you know that? Remember last week when I talked about the word shaka? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 
And that means to bow down and give honor and, and homage. That's what it basically means. Jesus did in every way as a servant. Jesus was a servant to his father. He wanted the will of God. Jesus said, my food is to do the, the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And then Jesus says in John 6 and 38, For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Remember in the Garden of Eden, uh, not Garden of Eden, Garden of Gethsemane, as Jesus was praying, he said, Father, is it possible that this cup pass from me? Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Remember the prayer that Jesus gave to us? We call it the Lord's Prayer. He said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I, I quoted that to you last Sunday. But here's the part I didn't quote to you. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As servants of the Most High God, we want God's will in our life. Yeah. It must be God's will in our life. In everything that we do and say and act on and whatever happens, it must be God's will. We have tried in our lives, Mark, Sheila and I in our life. We have tried, in, in, ever since we've been married, we have tried to do the perfect will of God. Now, we thought sometimes we were in the perfect will of God. But we, obviously it didn't happen that way. What should have been didn't happen. And what could have hit, been it, it didn't happen. And sometimes it's not because we were out of his will, it's because other than those around us was out of his will. <laughs> but God said for us, not my will, but thy will be done. That's what Jesus said to his father. He said, if there's any way possible, and he knew there was no other way. That must have been the loneliest day of Jesus' life. <clears throat> because he was... And, and then he said, the hour has come. He knew the hour. He knew the moment that he was to be betrayed. He knew the moment that he was to uh, uh, be arrested. He knew the moment he was to be on the cross. And that's why on the cross, he yelled, Allah, Allah, Shabbatini. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That was the loneliest hour of Jesus' life. The loneliest. Because at that moment, God had to turn his back on his only begotten son. Not because Jesus wasn't worth it. Not because he wasn't serving the Lord in his will. But because he took upon himself our sins. And he could not look on the sins of the world. It was doing something to his son. Jesus took on our sins and it was nailed to the cross with him. But when he died, right before he died, he said, it is finished. It is finished. So when we see news coming out of Jerusalem, we see news coming out of Israel and news coming out of Washington, D.C., let me tell you, not all of it is truth. <laughs> Amen. 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 And more likely, it's going to be lies. <laughs> when you see, hear somebody say, he's in the desert. His name is Rabbi something something. Let me tell you, you know it's not him. Because my Jesus sits at the right hand yeah. of the Father making intercession for me. Hallelujah. He's the Messiah. He's Yeshua HaMashiach. He's the Christ. Yes. He already paid the price. He doesn't need to come and pay the price again. He already laid down his life for us. So what you are about to see, folks, and I believe with all my heart, we're going to heaven pretty quick here. But what we're about to see is, is the happenings that are going to happen. That's why we're seeing tribulation. That's why we're seeing pandemics. That's why we're seeing things. Because let me tell you, folks, God is trying to tell his people, hey, get ready because I'm about to pick you up. And it won't be no spaceship. It will be the trump of God's sound. And Jesus don't need a spaceship. That's right. 
Jesus needs to speak the word and we're gone. We'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And we'll be raptured out and we'll be glorified and changed. And we'll be like him just as he is. We'll see him just as he is. Amen. For we will be like him. That means we'll be glorified. Our bodies will be glorified. We'll be changed. Hallelujah. There'll be false in, in interpretations of that scripture. That I've heard people say, that means we're going to be like little God. No. That means we'll be changed. That's all it means. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But I want you to know something this morning. God, hallelujah, God worshiped the Father in spirit and in truth. The ministry of Jesus was the heart of his worship because everything he did was submissive to the Father. And it brings me to this verse in chapter 12, verse uh, 1 and 2. Let me turn it to you there in Romans the, the the Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 1 and 2. We've got a mark here. Romans, I love the scripture. I know it by heart. <coughs> but let me read it to you. Because I've lived by the scripture all my, all my adult Christian life as best I could. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. But it doesn't stop there. Holy, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. What's that? Reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. That's where it lies for us as children of God. You want to know God's perfect will? I just read it to you. That we present our bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. That means not my will, God, but yeah. your will be done. Now, I know some of us don't like that. We want to do our own thing. But like the song that I used to sing as a young kid, me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. Me and Jesus, we got it all worked out. Me and Jesus, we got our own, own thing going. We don't need anybody to tell us what it's all about. <laughs> That's a terrible song. <laughs> I agree. You agree, love? I agree. We used to sing that. <laughs> terrible. Terrible song. Terrible. <laughs> My babe's over there, not terrible song. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. In, in, any, in, in any, what it was saying, in other words, this is your spiritual act of worship. When it's not your will, it's God's will. That's why we come into his worship. We come into his presence with singing and into his gates with worship. Yes. Hallelujah. We come into his presence with thanksgiving in our heart. And, and we worship him. When we come into his presence, that's why it's so important that when God's spirit is moving and the Holy Spirit is moving in our midst and there's a move of God's Holy Spirit that we be reverent yes. to the presence of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let me close with this. I love what Psalm 134, 1 says. Psalm 135, 1 says. This is what it says. Behold, bless you the Lord. All you servants of the Lord. How many is a servant here? Absolutely. And then Psalm 135, 1 says, Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Hallelujah. Worship him. Praise him. Servants of the Lord. Yeah. I love the scripture that God calls us friends. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. When you sing that song a few weeks ago, he calls me friend. Yeah. Amen. I'm a friend of God. 
In order to be a friend of God, we've got to be servants of God first. Hallelujah. And once we become servants of God, he says, I no longer call you a servant. Now I call you my child. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. We are sons and daughters of, of God. We've been bought with a price. When we serve him, when we begin to worship him, you know, I have never noticed when, I, when I'm in the presence of God that God ever calls me when he, the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. I never hear him refer to me as servant mom. He always says, mom. child, my child. Mm -hmm. And that's who we are. We start out serving God, servants of God. And that means we serve him every single day. We're employed. We're at Christ ambassadors, if you will. <laughs> Hallelujah. Remember, we used to, young people, we used to call Christ ambassadors for Christ. Hallelujah. But we are his ambassadors. We are his representatives. We serve out of worship, and we worship in our service. Whatever we do for God. Someone says, and I'll close with this, action speaks louder than words. Amen. Isn't that true? And it does. But when it comes to the children of God, we worship and act. And when we act, we worship. That's the way it ought to be for the children of God. I don't know about you, but I want to worship God. Now this is the second, second Sunday in a row you're going to beat, beat those to the restaurants. <laughs> You're what you'll go home and your wife says, What are you doing you so early? Yeah. Go back. No. <laughs> no, she won't say that. <laughs> Stand your feet if you will. <laughs> no, I know your your wife, she won't say that to you. <laughs> when, <laughs> when we worship and they act, and when we act, we worship, how beautiful it is when it flows together. How beautiful it is when it flows together. We got you hit for a moment. There's a lot of people in this world, maybe a lot of people we know, who don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ. Who can't call God God. He's a far distance. He's somewhere out in outer space. He doesn't know him. They don't know him. She may not know him. He may not know him. But this morning, you're here this morning, and, and you hear my voice. And I want you to know Jesus is only a prayer breath away. And he will come into your heart if you'll let him. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to ask Jesus to come into your heart. He'll be the Lord of your life. Will you say, everybody, say this prayer with me this morning? And if you would like to know Jesus, say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I acknowledge, I acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. That Jesus came. That Jesus came in the form of a man. In the form of a man. And he was servant. And he was servant. And he served us and he served by us. giving his life. By giving his life. He laid down his life. He laid, he laid down, down his life for me. For me. Because of my sin. Because of my sin. Forgive me of all my sins. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And be my Lord. And be my Lord. And my master. And my master. And my Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a praise. Is that thing on? Yeah. I want I want you to know you're